to Morning and Friends and Service for a Healthy World for Humans and Non-Humans Alike. My guest today is the one, wonderful, world-renowned plant-based vegan chef, Matthew Kenny, whose culinary excellence is quite frankly second to none. Matthew's dishes are visual masterpieces as well as being delectable meals. Matthew, let me give you a huge, big, warm welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. So nice to be here. Well, I'm just so excited to share with my viewers and audience and um, the amazing work that you're doing in the world and have been doing in the world. So let's start at the very beginning. Um, like me, you know, you're very passionate about the planet in crisis. And, you know, we're all facing this greatest test really ever encountered by humanity. And the work that you're doing is phenomenal. And that's why I'm really excited to share your message today. Now, you know, for me, moving forward, my 100% belief is the work that people like yourself are doing, Matthew, um, towards getting the world moving towards a plant-based vegan diet. It's so crucial for our species. And when I was, you know, looking and uh, reading about the work that you've been doing since way back in 93, when you opened your first restaurant, but I'm going to hand the story over to you because I want you to share with the world where we are right now in 2020, where you've been opening more restaurants during the pandemic. Just go and tell the world what you've been doing. It's fantastic. Well, it's, it's been a long uh, journey. I grew up in a small um, coastal town in Maine and I, I was you know, really deeply uh, passionate about nature and the environment from, from the beginning. I spent most of my life outdoors before I moved to New York when I was after college, but health and wellness and, and the environment was always very important to me and appreciating it. And at the same time, I, um, you know, I really loved food, but I never had any vision of becoming a chef. I moved to New York expecting go, to go to grad school. And then when I got there, this was in the late eighties, the, the buzz of the restaurants in New York City was really something like I hadn't experienced growing up in a small town. And I became fascinated with the restaurant industry because of all the, uh, all the details that go into it. And uh, it's a production every day. And I decided to uh, want to learn more about it. So instead of grad school, I went to a French cooking school. And I was eating very healthy food at the time. Of course, plant-based food in those days wasn't what we could consider health food. You know, it was more just very clean, a lot of fruits and vegetables. I guess you could call it more of a Mediterranean diet was my way of, of eating. And once I learned these uh, French techniques and, and the magic that could happen uh, in the kitchen, I, I was just caught, you know, and I, uh, I, I became fascinated with it. So in the early years, I, I really tried to apply French techniques to Mediterranean cuisine, still very clean. Um, but over time, you know, I realized that guests wanted indulgence and so things became a little bit heavier and, and there was a digression or a diversion actually between what I was cooking and what I was eating in my personal life. I was going in one direction, doing more and more yoga, eating more and more plants. And my work was going in the other direction, a little bit heavier, not quite as healthy. And, you know, having that alignment between our work and our personal passions is really important. I think if we're going to really do our best for the planet. So it was a long process of, understanding how I could bring these two, you know, passions together, health and wellness and, and the culinary art world. Eventually, uh, I was taken to a vegan restaurant and I'd never considered becoming a vegan because I'd never had really good vegan food. And I, every time I had tried to make it, it was, there were some exceptions, but for the most part, it wouldn't stand up to what I believed, you know, guests would require to want to come to a restaurant or even change the way they eat. But something, some kind of light bulb went off during this dinner experience. Um, wasn't because it was fascinating food or anything else. It was really the people. I could see that the restaurant was full of people who really cared about their health, but the health of the planet and animals and sustainability and longevity and all the things that I think we as chefs are responsible for bringing to the world. So that story in and of itself is a really long process of of you know inner conflict and and questioning myself and eventually just came to the point where I realized my role as a chef is to you know bring the most delicious healthy food to the to the world and hopefully uh, offer an opportunity for people to still enjoy food every day enjoy wine every day indulge every day and enjoy you know gourmet culinary experience and yet do what's in complete alignment 
um, for the planet and all of its inhabitants. So I started experimenting and even that was another uh, two or three year process because all the techniques that I'd learned were not really applicable to plants mm -hmm. and not relying on dairy, not relying on thickeners and things that we had uh, used in the past. So I had to really like develop a new set of fundamental techniques and they're still developing. We have an innovation kitchen now and it was, um, it was a real journey for 10 years because the market, consumer market was not really ready for plant-based food to be seen as a gourmet um, type of option. And, you know, the media wasn't really interested in it and the finance market wasn't really interested in it, but that all started to uh, unfold a little bit, I guess, five or six years ago. And it's been a good five or six years for, you know, plant-based, um, the plant-based segment. And now, fortunately, it's, it's fashion and it's also really it is it does what it's supposed to in terms of um you know this alignment with the planet and and all of us but yeah there are a lot of nuances to it you know it was very challenging mm -hmm. and um but these days we're really lucky we have an innovation team and and a really uh, strong brand and we're working with great partners all over the world so it's a very exciting time and um feel like it took quite a while to get here that's fantastic it's a beautiful story and i i know you're so inspired to continue it's your life's work, right? And when you work from your when you work from your soul, what means the world to you? It, it it's not like work, is it? It's like jumping out of bed in the morning. I'm so excited. I mean, I'm 63, right? Bill's nearly 80. We hike and bike and do yoga. We never have a sneeze. We travel. Isn't that what the life should be for? You know, I have a funny saying: happy, healthy, dead. Right? We shouldn't be deteriorating the head, the dementia, the kneecap, all the stuff that goes on. It's just crazy. What I'm hugely excited about though, Matthew, is, um, well, many things about you, but being trained in various prestigious institutions yourself, right? You then opened up your own plant-based vegan culinary institute, you know, and I would love you to share the exciting um, Future Food Institute's project with my audience. Well, yes, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, the, the first few years were really hard in part because of the various reasons I mentioned, but a, another large um, challenge was that, you know, cooks and people who wanted to work in our kitchens were not familiar with these techniques. Mm -hmm. So we could train them, um, but it's a process and, and really it's hard to train when we're at, in the midst of running a busy restaurant kitchen. So eventually I started teaching classes out of the back of one of the restaurants and I noticed how curious people were to make these, you know, plant-based cheeses or um, all the different things that we do. And a couple of years later opened a, um, I guess it was probably at the time, it was the, the country's first um, state accredited plant-based school. And it was mostly focused on raw food. And we ran that for eight years and it grew and graduated a few thousand students. Um, and I sold it a few years ago and, um, and we always wanted to get back into education, but in a different way, because that course was mostly focused on raw food, which is yeah. a personal passion. We love it, but we really felt like the curriculum needed to be broader. And so um, we were planning to launch Food Future Institute later this year, online first, and then on site in 2021. And when COVID um, forced us to shut down restaurants all across the world, our team was, you know, looking around, what are we going to do? And I said, well, we can expedite the uh, launch of FFI. Sorry, I need to check on my cat. Yeah. Oh, she's okay. <laughs> um, she's just sitting on the fence. Um, you know, and I wanted to speed up the process by several months. So we, um, we hired a videography team and photography team and our, our innovation team and our education team got together and we developed the curriculum and had a web developer and rented a really beautiful kitchen and we put it all together uh, in a few months. And we launched in the midst of COVID, I guess it was in May. Um, and because everybody's at home and cooking and needing new ideas for cooking, we, we launched with almost 500 active students the first week and now it's probably closer to 1500. Yeah. And it's a really intensive um, course called Fundamentals and it covers uh, 18 modules, about 120 lessons. And we really take a lot of the same techniques that I learned in French cuisine, but of course we had to adapt them and demonstrate them through creative recipes. That was the other thing with culinary school that I, I did learn tremendous amount with techniques, but the recipes were based on classic 
foods that weren't necessarily seen in restaurants today or in even in homes. The great way to learn techniques, but we really wanted to plot, apply them to contemporary food recipes that basically we've come up with in the last couple of years or adaptations of more classic dishes. So it's a tough course. We've had um, five graduates so far. I think it will take most people nine or 10 months to complete. And uh, it's really, really fun to watch the site because there's a live feed and they can communicate with one another and we can see all their work and they're from 60 countries. So it's, it's really inspiring to see the work of our students. And yeah. especially when I look online or somebody tags me on Instagram and I look at their um, chickpea pancake and it looks better than the one we taught in the lesson. So, you know, there's a lot of talent and a lot of passion, a yeah. lot of people who really care about bringing more of this to the world. And it's a community that um, is going to keep growing. So it's exciting. It's so exciting. I mean, um, actually just yesterday, I was uh, online with one of our students in South Africa and um, she did the most incredible presentation and just what you said there about your chickpea pancakes, she made this incredible sushi bowl um, because we teach a little bit of oriental medicine work through our macrobiotic courses and um, she did miso broth with these beautifully thought out designs of her nori with rice and avocado and umeboshi paste and it was like a banquet and I actually felt I should be in her class, you know? <laughs> so, you know, for me, um, cooking has become a lost art. It's such a, I mean, it, it's such a creative thing to be able to do. And I, like you, Matthew, um, you know, I've been training chefs for many years, particularly for European royal families. And just as you said, these, these chefs, um, you know, they're, they're steeped in teaching or cooking meat and dairy and fish and eggs and they have no idea. And I feel what I teach is so simple, you know, but then they can amp it up because they have the professional culinary artistic skills that you have. I'm more of a teacher than, than a chef, although I, I teach the plant-based nutrition and, and the cooking and everything. Um, so, but you know, just what you say, when you see these students, it's like, you're like an excited five-year-old because they've done something actually even better than you. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah, you know, it's really, say, it's really inspiring. Say, um, you know, your passion is your driver is an understatement. You're continually open, opening more restaurants across the US. And I wanted to ask if you have any plans on moving and bringing some restaurants, opening your MK restaurants here in the UK. We do. We're actually, um, we'll be able to talk about them more specifically soon, but we're, we're working on a couple of different um, partnerships there and they're both pretty high profile. So uh, hopefully soon, uh, once things settle down with our restrictions and everything, but I would expect within a year, we will at least have one open, if not, uh, if not a couple. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, like yourself, um, you know, as a long time teacher and, and what, you, what you do in the world, uh, our passion is about teaching human ecology and, and sustainability. And I, all, I always hear from so many people, oh, well, plant-based vegan eating, it's very elitist. And of course, I always have 101 different answers. My top answer always being really, but not more expensive than years of medicine and stress on the body and the destruction of the planet. So Matthew, I would love to hear your response because I'm sure you must hear this a thousand times as well. You know, it's interesting uh, you said that because I just read an article this morning and I, I read so many different news things in the morning or art articles, I guess. And I don't remember where I read it, but I've been thinking the opposite for all these years when I'm cooking at home. Of course, we can go out and buy fancy raw, you know, cheeses yeah. for $30 a wheel or whatever. But, you know, my food at home is like uh, a, a yam and some sauerkraut and broccoli and I don't know, maybe some roasted mushrooms. But I mean, it's a few dollars. It's so much less expensive. And not to mention, like you said, the medicine and the added costs of not being healthy. Yeah, but it's not. And I can say from running restaurants, for example, a typical restaurant may have um, may spend 25 or 30 percent of its revenue on purchasing food. And we use and that's using, you know, sometimes not the best ingredients. But in our restaurants, we use organic, local, the highest quality ingredients we can possibly uh, use. And we certainly don't try to like cut corners or even think about cost when we're making these recipes but it ends up that our costs are more like 20%. So it's substantially less expensive. 
And I just feel like that's a, a bit of a myth because a lot of people, when they first get into it, they don't have the techniques that they have with traditional cuisine. So they rely on, you know, product products, packaging, processed foods and things like that, which of course are more expensive because they're yeah. already prepared. And, and, um, but yeah, it's a myth. I, I, I don't agree. I know. Well, it's interesting because many years ago, um, I created a series of recipes for action against hunger in London. And uh, I lived on five pounds for the week and I took that five pounds and I went to the store and I bought some organic vegetables and a little bag of short grain brown rice and a little bag of lentils. And Matthew, out of that one pack of lentils, it was 99p, I made 36 burgers. You see, so I love to dispel a myth. So I'm glad you're on the same page as me with that. And even when students or clients come on board and they adopt this way of life, they say, you know, Marlene, I've actually saved about 40% on groceries. I would never have believed it. So you're right. You know, you're correct in saying, you know, the people are buying all the ready-made processed foods. Well, of course that's expensive, you know, but Bill and I, we eat like a world, a third world diet, you know, grains and beans and pulses and fruits and nuts and vegetables. And look at the nutrition that's in there. It's phenomenal. Yes, it's, and it's delicious. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. You know, I, as a chef, I, I, love great tasting food. I would probably never have become plant-based or especially a plant-based chef if I didn't believe that it had the potential to be the best food on the planet. And I really think it does. And I think a lot of top chefs in the world who are not plant-based would agree actually, but it's a little harder for them to make that change. Sure. Um, but you know, I hear this all the time from some of the best chefs in multiple countries and they really are coming around. So it's a process. We just, the consumer has to support as well to, to create the demand. Uh, absolutely. You know, the other thing I do love about you, Matthew Kenny, is that like myself, you're a fellow yogini and the combination of this way of eating, I'm sure you agree, you know, that vegan living is so in line with the philosophy of Ahimsa. And, um, you know, for me, that really is the best way for me to explain to people why I do what I do, you know, because I feel like if you walk your talk, um, then you speak the truth, what's in your heart, you know, you deliver great food to people, you're doing it for everything, you know, the whole connection, the, the man, the woman, the child, the cat, you know, rumpel out there, the environment, everybody, you know, we're all in it together. So that's, um, I love it that, you know, you're gaining, I've been taking yoga a long time. Do you teach or do you just, um, do you teach yoga? I do, um, I, I do the le a lot of the lessons for the online course. Right, um, right. We, we're now doing FFI Home, which is a course that's going to be a really beautiful course, but it doesn't use all the, um, you know, unique equipment and the recipes are faster and a lot of like one, one pot or one bowl type of meals. But um, I did probably 60% of the lessons on the last course. I probably will not on the next one. We have um, our instructors will probably do that. But yeah, I do teach. I like teaching as long as I have time to do it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, um, what's on the Matthew Kenny Christmas menu? Where can you share with us, please? You know, I usually, if uh, holidays, I normally go to visit my family on the coast of Maine. And they, um, you know, because of the restrictions this year, we're, we just thought it'd be yeah. safer to wait until things settled down. So um, and that was the case at Thanksgiving too. And I just ordered from Plant Food and Wine, which is our flagship restaurant here in Venice. And I mean, the Thanksgiving menu was was amazing. It was like six or seven dishes, but very seasonal flavors, yeah. you know, unique squashes and and something with pecan. And I don't remember the Christmas menu. I'm going to trust the uh, the chefs at Plant Food and Wine and just enjoy uh, a quieter day. I, I do love, I love to cook, but, you know, I, I think I'm thinking about food and working around food and tasting it all day so at home it's not when i do cook at home it's really simple like quick pasta or yeah. you know like i said a roast roasted yam with some yeah. other vegetables and things like that that's exactly the same for me because i'm actually doing um you know we all reinvent ourselves all the time so obviously with the year that's just passed for us too clients couldn't come students couldn't come all our work was cancelled so i reinvented myself and do you know what a scullery made is a scullery a made, a scullery made. It's like, um, do you know the old oh, yeah. upstairs, downstairs? So I just put myself out there as a scullery made and, and people book me and I cook the food here and deliver it. <laughs> That's great. So, wow. 
So hopefully by next year I can hang up my scholarly made outfit and get back to teaching, you know. <laughs> I'm sure by next year at some point. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Matthew, I could talk to you forever and I appreciate your time because I know you're very, very busy. And um, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the work that you're doing in the world for humans and non-humans alike, for our planet, for everything, because collectively we need to keep pushing the rock up the hill and get this message out to the masses. Well, it sounds like you you are also doing the same and I'm, I'm sure you're working hard and, and you, but you're having fun doing it or yeah, happy yeah. about it at least. So uh, keep up the good work. Hope to meet you in the UK after after we get through this year. Yeah, that would be lovely. And I'll make you lunch. Or you can make me lunch or we can cook lunch together. How would that be? Perfect, that sounds great. <laughs> great, lots of love. Thank you, Matthew. You too.